Uh, hello and welcome back to the podcast. I'm Wookie and I'm here with uh, Zenrot. Hello. And that's everyone. Uh, Toast is... I literally tried to find any other mod and everyone else is gone, so you just get a... Uh, just get us two this time. No one else. <laughs> the, the, the small cast. Yeah, small cast. Duo cast. Just us here. Uh, forgive me if we sound a little bit weird, but I really hope everything's fine. We tried so hard in the beginning. Skype just wasn't working, but we'll see how it goes now. We're here to talk about Dokkan. Are you, are you ready, Zen? Oh, yeah. All right. So why don't you tell us what's going on? In the world of Dokkan. So, all right, so we'll start with uh, global, as as one does. Uh, it's actually you. currently not the worst thing in the world. Yeah, I actually wanted to talk about global this time, <laughs> which I think is new for this show. Yes, because uh, listen, you all watch the show, and you know for we've done like thirty three episodes at this point. I think in every single one of them we've talked on global and how it's doing. <laughs> and for I don't the think first... there's a single episode we've been nice to global. No, not a... there's entire episodes where we don't even talk about global because we just don't feel the need. It's important. <laughs> but for the first time, it felt like they finally had gotten stuff on the right track. And I just wanted to start with it so that we could stop getting the comments saying, please talk about something <laughs> positive about global. <laughs> they finally can. They get one. I think that's important for us to bring up whenever it happens, because it just never happens. Because it doesn't ever happen. No. <laughs> uh, what's happening in Global Zone? Uh, well, they got uh, the the Cyberman battle. Yes. With the, the, with the <laughs> maybe the best card art in the game right now. <laughs> They did, and they also, it was so surprising because it, this is maybe the fastest global has ever gone in an event <laughs> compared to the release of Japan to the, like, one day difference. Oh, it's easily the fastest, which is why it's good. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, yeah, but I mean, it's easily the, the quickest they've gotten in an event in comparison. Yeah, and they did it for the right one, too, because this Cyberman, oh man, I really wish Cyberman, Cyberman battle was real. <laughs> Oh, I know. If only it was actually a thing. Yeah. I would yeah. play that. Yeah, 100%. But at least, hey, pretty good April Fool's joke, and we do have this awesome Cyberman art that I die on the inside every time I look at that Cyberman with the trunk sword. The one with the sword on his back? Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's so simple, but it's just the fact that they're redoing the title. They're, the Cyberman is doing like that same weird like face pose. <laughs> <laughs> the other that's on the original dark one. It's so good. It's so Yeah, good it's one. not even like that original of a joke. It's just like it's executed so funnily. Yeah, yeah, for one hundred percent. That's what that's what I'm feeling on that. Ah oh, man. Love it. Easily. I know we've only had like like what at this point? Two April Fool's joke. I think the other one is Yamcha and there's a Cyberman one. I definitely like the Cyberman one much better. It's just funnier to me. Uh, yeah, so do you think with the way that they're getting uh, Cybermen battle so quickly, do you think Global is going to start releasing events simultaneously? No, no. <laughs> really? Not no, definitely not. I assume this was because of the kind of event that it was, and it was really easy to translate and everything, and they didn't really try that hard. Mm. I just feel like there's no real reason to keep them separate if it's really it's really silly i guess the only real benefit we got here is that you know um the global gets to just prepare a little bit and like we were trying to talk about in the beginning uh the reason the, the you know along with cyberman battle they also got the orb system and the 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 good thing is is that japan actually got to like experiments and basically like we got to figure out that dodge was useless uh, global did, <laughs> yeah global didn't need to do that sacrifice and keep picking dodge we kind of jumped on that bullet for them um and also we just didn't get any orbs when that thing originally released i that if i remember correctly we it took like it was like tooth and nail like dragging tooth and nail to get anything 
like to get one unit up would take like weeks of work and global starts off with like you i think you can do like multiple units at a time like insane it almost feels like we beta tested that for them <laughs> it does kind of feel that way sometimes doesn't it like yeah like I think uh, generally it's better but like and i think that might be part of the reason why they're probably not going to do it because the version parity means that people aren't playing both basically yeah, I could see that. And so that's less money. I also feel like the maybe on the JP side they can get away with giving less. And on the global version, maybe people feel like they need more, which is weird to think about, but maybe that's just like the Japanese gotcha player mentality that is not so ingrained in uh, uh, us, I guess, globally yet, right? We haven't reached that breaking point. <laughs> We have not been. No, I guess not. <laughs> no, not yet. Eventually, it's going to happen, but Man. not yet. All right. Well, what else we got going for global? Oh, let's see what else we got on the line. So we got uh... <laughs> because we can't truly have a global segment without talking a little bit of shit about it. Uh, they got the tickets. The these are the uh, you pulled, and then you get tickets for pulling tickets. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The for the stones, uh, and a bunch of people didn't get theirs, and their response to that was, "Well, that sucks. <laughs> Good luck." So close. We came so close. so close. Global, <laughs> so close. Originally, when we were gonna do this, my original bit was gonna be we were just gonna say "Global Good" in a three-minute song interlude, and then we were gonna say like, "Okay, time to talk about JP," because that's all you would really need. It would be like the ultimate catharsis. Like, all right, global is good. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> like, you don't need to hear us say it. You just need to bask in it. Enjoy it. <laughs> Yeah, just just take your moment and skip the rest of this to the yeah. Japan segment. One hundred percent. But this error, man, I know that on the JP side, because at this point we know like a tiny problem that happens on the JP side of the game becomes a huge issue when it comes over globally. Like, it, I think it's just like I don't know if the JP player base is smaller but dedicated compared to the global side which is just humongous in terms of pure raw size because it's global and there's just so many more people so japan can get away with like tiny errors because i remember people saying that there this arrow did exist here it's just it didn't affect many i don't know what happened on the global side where it all of a sudden it decided we're not gonna work anymore <laughs> we're gonna yeah but the, even that like it, their response was basically just like damn anyway <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it really sucks. I don't know what it's they were. It's fucking funny though. It's kind of like in Christmas. Imagine watching everyone opening their presents and you just got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the whole family sat around opening boxes, and you're just looking at your empty lap. Yeah, you're looking at your empty lap, <laughs> just completely saddened. Man, you'd have to be some. I don't know. But I don't think anyone we knew got affected by this. Because funny enough, I don't think Global has a, the only person that would ever hit it that we would know would probably be Penta, just because how bad his luck is. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's what Global you're not wrong about that one. No, that's what that, maybe that's what Global needs to. Maybe they need like a scapegoat that can take in all the bad luck. Because you know, maybe that's why it didn't happen to us. Because we have Penta. They need someone to go up there and be like, this is shit, and have <laughs> their pen <pencil> escape. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is terrible. This is not Vegeta. Why is this my Swedish? Just, no, he's not even Swedish, he's Finnish. <laughs> yeah, he's Finnish. He's not Swedish. <laughs> my my, my Penta accent has just gotten <laughs> more <laughs> devolving every single time I've done it. Yeah, I think it gets worse and worse. Uh, I can't be every Penta. single time. No, can't be. But yeah, that's what <laughs> that's what that's what actually global global needs. And you know what? If you want to be that Penta, then let me tell you: put put in your resume to impressive ninja skills at gmail dot com, and we will gladly look over it and see who can fit to be the Penta that will save global. 
from <laughs> any having this. The event. Penta that Global deserves. Exactly. The Global Penta. The ultimate Penta. Better than our Penta. <laughs> that was not Global <laughs> in any way. He's Japanese exclusive. Uh, that's what they're getting. So yeah, send it to impressive ninja skills at gmail.com. I'm being serious about this. Send it or else we will not do an episode. I, I, you, it took you motherfuckers like three weeks to send me, no, not three weeks, three months to send me D free questions. So you better know that right now. I am being serious when I say send in your resume. <laughs> not up for debate. No, I will. I, I'm the one that brings everyone together for the show. I will cancel the show. <laughs> I get no applications. <laughs> We're ending it right here. Exactly. Oh, all right. All right. I think that, I think that's global, basically. Uh, good stuff. One very bad stuff. <laughs> so rip to them. <laughs> they can't get there. Good luck. Uh, yeah. Good luck, Zen. What's happening on the JP side of things? Uh, Super Android Seventeen is out. And he's actually kind of neat. And that's not an April Fool's joke. <laughs> I felt like it was an April Fool's joke. <laughs> I was like, what is this? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, he's still like the most poorly designed character in anime history. Like, look at him. He's so stupid looking. But his event is kind of fun. And I'm pretty sure they like completely fundamentally altered the game mechanics. <laughs> Yeah, so we have to talk about that. This is maybe the most since someone, someone on the team must really love Super 17. Like, they had to walked into that meeting where they said Super 17 is being made and he slammed his hand down the glor- on, the, on the desk and said, we need to make him good. And... The crazy bastard has somehow made it so it's fundamentally changed everything in the game. So if if you didn't know how this works, um, let, let's just quickly go over what Super Seventeen does here because of what we have of the info. Um, his passive skill is uh, he's well, first of all his leader skill he is the uh one hundred twenty percent lead for extreme AGL types. Um, his passive skill is. Damage received uh, minus 40%, and attack plus 30% for each attack received up to 120%. So by the end, with enough attacks, uh, he'll be strong and good. Uh, But the problem is, the way that the game used to work uh, up until he came out was that um, when a phase shift happened, all the stat buffs would basically be removed. So all the ones you would get from... Um, from your super attack and stuff like that and your passive they would basically go away and you'd need to get them again so if they kept that way he'd be pure garbage because every single time he would lose every single bit of his attack and you'd have to build up to 120% again but the way that they've changed the game actually it will stay and it will be remembered which is crazy for all of for every for for every character that's been released in every Dokkan Fest where we've complained about not complained but said like uh he's gonna lose this when the next phase happens for this to be the unit that broke the camel's back that he was designed in such a way that he would actually be complete shit if the old system stayed and instead of just making him better to fit the current system they completely changed the system. <laughs> Do you think, you know, because you said, like, oh, they must really like Super 17. I think it's probably the opposite. And I think they made Super 17. And the devs who designed him, like, it was just a different team. And they didn't know that the game worked that way. (laughs) I think they made him. And they were like, oh, this will be good. And then the devs who make, like, the battle engine were like, hey, what the fuck? (laughs) He's awful. And then so they had to completely redo it. Uh I could see that being a case too. The idea of them being like, "This guy doesn't work. You're gonna need to redesign him." Is like, "The fuck, we're not. <laughs> we don't get paid for that. You should completely change the game." <laughs> It'd be easy yeah. It will. <laughs> maybe the character designers, because like everyone always talks about how excited they are to pull. Maybe they're the ones that like get all the credit. So like you know, you got the two dev teams. You got the battle designers and the game designers, or not the uh, the character designers. And the character designers are like, everyone just 
plays this game to pull on our characters anyway. And we plays it to pop your stupid bubbles. <laughs> game battle designers. And the battle designers like have to sit at the uncool table in the cafeteria. like They don't get to hang out with the yeah. cooler devs. <laughs> it really does. The, the social hierarchy of Japan is actually very similar. Of, to of Akatsuki Studios. <laughs> yeah, Akatsuki Studios. I could see that being a thing. I'm sure there's definitely people in the Dokkan side that um on the the dev side that definitely feel like you know we could release whatever unit and people will pull for it because they're just here for the collection's sake and there has to be like the brave few men and women standing on the side going like no the game still matters (laughs) it's still real to me (laughs) devin it's It's still real to me and they're doing their damnedest to try and make some semblance of a balance to the game. Trying their best anyway. The 120% kind of <laughs> really fucks up a lot of things. Uh, and a lot of events are kind of easier now, but it's at least still enjoyable and stuff like that. Man. Um, it, that, that, it, it actually makes me a little bit worried that your version of the idea of things is actually how it works in Doka. <laughs> I would hate it if it would ever come to a point where they just release units and willy nilly and just be like, I don't know, this guy does this. He does seven hundred. He just does some shit. Yeah, here's a Raditz. He, <laughs> his leader skill is two hundred percent, and we brought him along with a Nappa who gets seven hundred and twenty eight percent damage. Boom, get them. <laughs> like, why? That would be kind of funny, though. That uh, would be kind of funny. Imagine a Dokkan Vest Raditz. <laughs> Double Sunday. <laughs> Fucking, uh... No, it better be called uh, Keep Your Eye on the Birdie. Oh, Keep the Eye on the Birdie. Yeah, other oh, Raditz, man. I only know his um, attack animations because of fighting games. I don't remember his attacks from the anime or from the manga at all. I don't remember him saying that, like the 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 video. That's games. only in the dub. It's only in the dub. Really? So in the yeah. In Japanese, he just silently just goes like, "Here's a fucking blast, die, die, brother." Huh. Well, no, keep your eye on the birdie was uh for Piccolo. Oh, okay, okay. Still weird that I guess on the English side, this is like, well, someone has to name these moves. And if they're not going to do it, we're going to do it. And also, I really like the days of the week. Even though Raditz, I don't think, would ever have the concept of like what a Monday is or a Tuesday. It also really implies that in the grander scope of the universe, like on the opposite side and some distant planet on planet Vegeta, they said, man, Mondays, am I right? And <laughs> that very idea seems so weird. Like, wouldn't you call your day something completely different if you were from space? Or maybe Monday means... Probably. I mean, well, that's kind of the thing. It's like the Star Wars thing, right? Where, like, why does everyone speak English (laughs) on every planet that exists out in the fuck world? It's kind of the same thing. Not not, not my boy. Not my... Not my boy right there. The, the, the rip. <laughs> rip he should have shot first. <laughs> or had better aim. But yeah, Super 17. <laughs> Super 17. He's, uh, so, I, I don't know. Some god has to love him. For him to, I still can't believe that there's a Super 17 and that he functionally works. Because I think in the beginning when we saw his info, we were like, this guy's going to suck ass. And then... The devs pulled it, the rug right under us and said, haha, actually the game is changing. And it's like, well, fuck me. I didn't expect that. So <laughs> how was the fuck was I supposed to know you were going to do that? So fine. Are there any other characters that super changes stuff for? I don't know. Not off the top of my head. I, I wish I had the old ones for sure. There's some that have, I think, infinite stacking that just didn't matter because of the face switching, if I remember right. That's why we always like put them lower on like the list stuff because they're 
it's it was like nice that they got this, but they were so dedicated to it that it didn't actually matter and stuff. But I have to look back and think about it. I can't really think. I'm brain empty right now. <laughs> can't think of anything <laughs> together. And speaking of brain empty, I think that's it for Japan. Other than Cyberman Battle, well, we already talked about that. It's really not much. Yeah, we were going. talking about that. Yeah, not going much in Dokkan right now, but that's fine. We can move on to questions. That's right. If you have a question, don't send me any more D-Free questions, because after I complained about uh, there being no D-Free questions on the last episode, we got more D-Free questions, so we have plenty now. <laughs> don't need to send them anymore. <laughs> Uh, but the Gmail is impressive ninja skills at gmail.com. Feel free to send questions if you got any there. Uh, so, first one uh, to Wokey Can you fuse with either the Senrot, Toast, or D Free? To D Free, can you be on the modcast more? To Toast, can I smash you? From Adam, who lost a bet and had to baba his cooler. Uh, so let's break down these questions. Question one, uh, my fusion partner is, uh, Valley always will be for the time being. I'm a one fusion kind of partner, man. I'm not into the, the <laughs> idea of fusion swapping. Multiple partners. No, thank you. Yeah. no. You're not a, 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 what is it? Polyamorous fuser. Yeah. No, I'm not one of them. <laughs> I'm not a polyamorous fuser. fuser. <laughs> I'm not about to fuse with anyone. So yeah, it'll be Valley as long as Valley's alive, and I'm pretty sure last we checked he still was. <laughs> so <laughs> As far as I know. Yeah. Uh did D Free can he be on the modcast more? Uh he's a busy guy. We can certainly ask him. I think if we asked him we probably would do it in, but you don't want to abuse the D Free pri- privileges. You gotta make you have to keep him like a special occasion like Andre the Giant. If you use Andre the Giant too large <laughs> He ceases to be less special. <laughs> That's D-free true. D free is our Audrey the Giant. D free the Giant. D free the Giant. Perfect. <laughs> um, and to Toast, I'm gonna say right now for Toast, he would probably say no. <laughs> He's not into probably that. not. And sorry about having to bother the. I'm gonna assume it's a physical cooler that he had to Baba, in which case that really sucks because I kind of need him as a leader. So (laughs) please don't, please don't Baba him. (laughs) So hard to find a leader for anything. Uh, You think they're ever going to fix the friend system? I mean, dude, they gotta, right? Like maybe, maybe for the anniversary, like they'll reveal brand new leader, not brand new leaders, the brand new leader uh, friends list. And they'll actually make it good because right now it's just a pain in the ass to try and find anyone. Like there's so much division, and that it wasn't. A, it didn't feel like it was a problem during God leads. It was maybe a little bit hard to find a physical Broly, but with four leaders, it was usually easy to find any one of them. And then they started dividing them between super and extreme, <laughs> and now it's much. Yeah, harder. then it really just like went to shit. Yeah. We, I think we actually have a question about that a little bit later on. But thank you, Adam, who ha- who lost a bet and had to bob his cooler. Next. Hey, guys. Big fan of the modcast, or what is left of it after the prison break. Oh, that's right. We we Penta's, Penta technically died last episode when we broke Red Z. Out of oh, jail. that's right. He, he died in the jailbreak. He died in the jailbreak. The lore. The, the lore of the modcast <laughs> is we lose <laughs> We're the, we're the only mod, we're the only podcast with such a large roster of people coming in that we can actually afford to kill off with some of our own people. To kill off our cast. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I forgot. Uh, if you can make any card relevant again, uh, what would it be? Two. Uh, for for Wookie, if I really got a hundred percent leader skill, what type would it be? And for the rest, what meta leader uh, skill do you think is next? Three, do you think D-Free has a friend at Bandai that gives him all the cards? Question four, what is your least favorite Dragon Ball fight? Person on Reddit, sometimes Twitter, Ursa Polotov? Or Carlos? All right, let's break down the question of one. Uh, if you could make any card relevance again, what would it be? Uh, hmm. 
feel like my answer is AGL Super Saiyan God. I mean, he's okay. He can still kind of function. He used to be like the shit, though. He like, used to be like, he was yeah. fucking sick. And now he's like, eh, he's filler, I guess. He's a filler for Super AGL, which, you know, my boy Super, uh, uh, Super Saiyan God deserves better. Where's our Super Saiyan God Dokkan Fest, by the way? Yeah, for God's sake. How are we giving one to Super 17? Meanwhile, I'm asking for a crumb <laughs> for Super Saiyan God Goku. <laughs> just a crumb of Super Saiyan God, please. Just, just need a little bit of it. Uh, I think that would be my case for that. For If I could just make anyone relevant. I don't know how. I don't know. He doesn't even have a doka. That would be a good way, actually. What about you actually doke on him? He's not. <laughs> he hasn't received a doke on. Uh... Maybe they'll doke on him whenever they do the Super Saiyan God festival. Because I doubt there's anything. Like, wouldn't it actually be really funny if it was just like he dokoned into an unrelated Super Saiyan God Goku? <laughs> like, from a completely different, like, sub arc in Super? Is he getting a Super <laughs> arc right now? Just not even the, close to the same. No, like, not even. It's like, this is from Battle of Gods and he's in some future arc. I actually have not seen anything in Dragon Ball Super, so I don't know where Super Saiyan God Goku shows up. Uh, maybe he'll show up in when? Oh yeah, that new arc just started for them. I don't know. What I'm trying to say is, I'll, the only episode I watched was the Aureli one, so <laughs> I don't know if he shows up there, but he had to because they replayed the Battle of Gods. But I think it'd be, I'd either way, make him relevant again, please. I just need it in my life. What about you, Zen? Um, obviously. AGL Kaioken Goku. He's still the best character in the game, but he needs to be actually more relevant. Like, you need to be able to use him more than one time. Oh, you're saying that... Oh, wait, actually, I think Kaioken Goku got a buff from this. Didn't his... Isn't his, um... I, now I have to look Yeah, up. you haven't seen all the hype about him right now? That he's, like, <laughs> the best shit in the game? Uh, I may have heard something about him being the greatest. I remember seeing a video from a YouTuber <laughs> about how he was one of the greatest... <laughs> uh let me see let me see here that oh man i have to wait for dbc space to load up a little bit and see what options i got here uh maybe if i actually use the english side instead of the, trying to pretend to look like i know japanese <laughs> Like, you can read the Japanese, yeah. Yeah, I, I think I've actually had friends before say to me, like, oh man, you must, you play that Japanese on the game, you must know some Japanese. And the answer is, like, no. Not really. <laughs> I really, I really don't. Uh, let's see. Mm, yeah, he got a buff from this, from the Super 17 changes. Because his, he had the old... Uh, fifty. I think he had fifty percent attack for ninety nine turns, and then you would lose it whenever the phase shifted. <laughs> but now that stack is infinite, infinite stacks. That's what you need in Dokkan, am I right? Yeah, you need your fights to last for forty five minutes as you yeah. stack progressively. It's, God, could you imagine if <laughs> if Dokkan actually got events where he just <laughs> all you did was stack? <laughs> It'd be so annoying. <laughs> so insanely long for no reason. Like 20 minutes on something. Just have your one dude get like 5 billion attack or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be silly. I mean, not what we were talking about. Well, they, had to, they can't do that because otherwise the Kyo God would just be too much. <laughs> that's, why, that's why we don't have those type of events. They're trying to balance the game in some way. If we ever get to the point where turn where we have in like twenty turns of Dokon, then you know that the balance has <laughs> been thrown off in some in somewhere along the way. Uh so there you go. There's an answer for that one. If we really got a hundred twenty percent lead, like a new Aureli, um I feel like the answer is Rainbow, right? <laughs> Bring in the hundred twenty percent rainbow lead. Oh god. And make it I mean, relevant. I guess they're gonna have to eventually, because that's that's obviously the end game here, right? Is like make each color team relevant, and then just make it a rainbow, like Super Gogeta was. Yeah, I feel like with the the way that they handled, or man, remember when everyone flipped shit when I said like I think Aureli's gonna be the rainbow lead, 
and and then everyone's like why the hell would they give it to a Rayleigh? the last person who was the rainbow lead was gogeta why would it be a really and then they totally made it a really <laughs> and it was great and then people started... were pretty tilted about that too because everyone's like who the fuck is that they, they were watch really dragon ball tilted. yeah exactly watch dragon ball bitch <laughs> yeah yeah that's right <laughs> we're gonna give this little girl five dokons in the span of like three weeks <laughs> Hell yeah, <laughs> she deserves it. I think that was also funny because people were flipping shit over those. Like, some characters have to wait like months to get one Dokkan Awakening, and this girl released with five. <laughs> Not with least with five, but she got. She released five. with so many. <laughs> yeah, she released with a lot. It was insane, like more than any. And it's funny had. that Dokkan finally put in a cat girl, but it's just like a tiny, doofy-looking robot little girl. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the perfect <laughs> the perfect symbol for it make it so so yeah i think uh 120 rainbow i think by the time we get 120 rainbow uh we might get other stuff to go with it just to kind of offset similar to how mass saiyan is 50 percent, but we have 120 percent leads right now so you know whenever we get like 200 percent leads or something maybe they'll finally feel it in their hearts to release the 120 percent or really Whenever that happens. I would like a new Aurelia, actually. I need her banner to come back. Because I need to get more dupes of her. That second banner release that she had was just so bad. Uh, So I would like another chance at her. I'm sure it'll happen sometime soon, right? Pro probably. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hopefully I won't have to wait too long. Uh, anyway, more of the questions. Oh, for the rest, I guess, uh, Zen, what type of meta leader skill would you want next? Uh, a Rayleigh with a rainbow, 120. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> next, do you think D3 has a friend at Bandai that gives him all the cards? Yes. Yeah, 100%. So it's me. You are the Bandai spy? <laughs> it's really? me, yeah. <laughs> Damn it. You I've been the spy the whole time. Know. Now everyone's going to blow up our spot because they know that you're the spy. You're the reason we have Super 17 being so good now. <laughs> That's why I praised him. So I was like, I made this. Perfect. Every time every time someone play, every time someone from a the America buy stones for, and uh, on the JP side of the game, you get like a $5 kickback from that. <laughs> they just know like, ah, oh, damn it. Another English speaker got it. Better give Zen some money <laughs> for the <laughs> for the surveys he's done. <laughs> uh, there you go. The answer is yes. Now you know. D free luck is actually fake, not real. Uh, not real. For what is your least favorite Dragon Ball fights? Least favorite, I guess. For all, not just classic Dragon Ball, but I guess Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and Dragon Ball GT. Uh, hmm. I don't know. Uh, I mean, there's definitely fights that are just like filler fights. <laughs> where it's yeah, like, that's. I mean, honestly, I think there's about as many or more mediocre fights than good ones. Yeah, like like Kui versus Vegeta. Is anyone really gonna? But that was an easy one that you can just say that. Oh, well, it lasted like three seconds and it was done. So who cares? Uh, hmm. Yeah, this is actually... I'm, I'm, to be fair, I mostly remember the ones I like the most. So, least? We'd have to... You know what? Just to be as controversial as possible, we should pick the ones that um, people really like that you just don't like for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm... I think Gohan versus Cell is pretty overrated. I, I remember you saying this beforehand, and now there's less people on with me here to disagree with you, so. <laughs> 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 that moment's cool, though. <laughs> it is cool, but I think the fight, at least in the anime, uh, it drags on way too long, and it's just Gohan beating the dick off of him. Yeah. Like the entire time, and then before that, it's a cell just like talking shit to him while the robot. Mess. Right, like it, it's it's a cool moment, but it starts going past like ah, oh, this is some nice catharsis to like oh my god, are we done? 
Yeah, he should be more like Crazy Murder Gohan from the BoJack movie, who just <laughs> finishes the fight. Yeah, the he's fight. just <laughs> absolutely nuking dudes. Yeah, that's imagine if we got that version of him <laughs> when he just completely obliterates <laughs> Cell. <laughs> Goku gets to live. Gets. I'm about that. All right, you know, fair enough with that. <laughs> I think that's some fair criticism for for that. Uh, for me, I think I'll say. Actually, in terms of actual overratedness, I think I'm going to have to go with Super Saiyan 2 Goku versus Majin Vegeta. I just... Maybe it's because... Wow, that's a popular one. That is really popular. People really like it. But I think it's more just like... Maybe it has something to do with the fact that Dokkan keeps releasing Super Saiyan 2 Gokus and Majin Vegeta specifically. Like, it's really strange how they keep releasing them, and I feel like that's maybe affecting how I feel about the fight a little bit. Oh, like, you're just annoyed at it at this point? Yeah, it's like, when I watched it as a kid, I was like, this is cool, oh my god, Vegeta's looking at him so evil, killing all those people, bitch-slapping Gohan, uh, Goten, not Gohan, uh, Goten, neck-chopping neck trunks, and he fights Goku, and uh, they have a pretty good fight. Like, the actual animation and stuff is good, I just feel like it wasn't as a good where it feels like people are just like, one of the top fights ever in the entirety of the series, and I'm just like, Okay, you do know this is basically extended filler and absolutely none of it matters. <laughs> like, I actually think if you remove Super Saiyan 2, Goku versus Majin Vegeta and just kept the end bit where they're like, Vegeta, we need to stop. I think the Saiyan, like, nothing would change. Like, I actually don't fully understand the purpose of Majin Vegeta other than we. I wanted to turn Vegeta evil just for a little bit. <laughs> Well, Majin Vegeta kind of, uh, I will say, feels like they were like, okay, we need uh, some dumbass reason why Boo gets out. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, well. It's a pretty dumbass reason. Because and maybe it also makes it worse. Is like when he was under the control, I'm like, okay, well, he's not under the control of his actions. But then when he's like, I let it happen. I'm like, you bitch. <laughs> you <laughs> idiot. It was like the cell shit, but way worse. <laughs> Because at least... Yeah, that is sort of Vegeta's whole thing, isn't it? Just, like, fucking up. Yeah, but that one was a colossal fuck-up in the grand stage of the of it all. And then Majin Vegeta, you know, everyone loves the moment where he's like, uh, everyone, you know, goodbye, Bulma, goodbye, Trunks, and even you, Kakarot. I don't have any other friends on Earth. Goodbye. And he them. <laughs> Just you all. Just the three. <laughs> you don't really have major feelings. The only people that like me. Don't have much to say to Piccolo, Krillin. We had some jokes. <laughs> we had some laughs. laughs. Uh, and then he, you know, he turns the soda, he blows himself up. Like very beautiful moment that is immediately undercut by the fact that fucking Boo shows up, going <laughs> no selling it. Yeah, Boo just doesn't give a shit. Yeah, Boo fly off now, <laughs> and Boo flies <laughs> off, and he's like, that was weird. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Completely disregarding anything that Vegeta did. Kind of undercuts the moment. <laughs> and then he comes back later again. So it's really just a non-stop. I'm just like, I don't understand why anything is happening here. Um. So yeah, I'll go with that one. Least favorite. I still think the actual fight itself is very good. But I just, similar to you with the overhyping it. Maybe Dokkan's overhyping of MV and... Super Saiyan 2 Goku has rubbed me the wrong way over the years. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, so thank you, Carlos. And next question. This is from, they didn't give us a name, so his name is No Name. Question one, does D-Free have a middle name? Uh, question two, do you play any Fire Emblem? And if you do, which is your favorite? Mine is Sacred Stones. Uh, for question one, his middle name is Hyphen. It's literally in the name. D slash free. So there you go. That's his middle name. <laughs> D hyphen free. The hyphen. Yeah, the hyphen is his middle name. Yeah. And yeah, we play Fire Emblem, and I think my favorite is probably Sacred Stones. Yeah. What do you what about you, Zun? Uh mine is also Sacred Stones, but I like Awakening a lot too. Yeah. Man. Fire Emblem's really good. I really like Fire Emblem. It is good. I like it, yeah. Yeah. So lucky that uh, Sakurai saved uh, Fire Emblem <laughs> by putting 
uh, two Japanese boys into his game and made a whole bunch of teenage kids playing Smash going, who the hell are, who, what the hell is a Marth and what is a Roy? Yeah. Sakura really did kind of bail that series out. Yeah, 100%. Uh, and now all Fire, now, now all Fire Emblem characters get to be added to Smash as well. So Every Eagles single system. one yeah. ever made. Now that the game is free. Not that the game is free. Now that the game is freed from, because I think was it what Awakening was going to be the last Fire Emblem because they're like Ike's game basically uh, bombed Path of Radiance. So they're like, all right, the next handheld one's basically the last one. Put in everything, put in five thousand supports. Yes, you can fuck a Lazuli. Let's go. You can <laughs> you can do whatever you want in this one. We don't care. And that was the one that kind of popped off, and everyone's like, this series is amazing. Let's go. They're like, why? Okay, I guess call off the plans. Call off, put put away the Nintendo Vault. They got the Fire Emblem. They took Fire Emblem out of the Nintendo Vault and said, "Turns out you get to live this time." And they put them away from F Zero and the other unused <laughs> Advance Wars, all the other unused Nintendo properties, and said, "You get to live now. Be free, my child." <laughs> Perfect absolutely perfect so yeah there you go easy question right there um next question uh so with this new wave of god leads hitting dokkan do you think we will ever get a form of uh fuck i'm just gonna call these dog leads demigod leads where the leader is 150 percent all stats for one type or super extreme types and the better question is if they do implement that what is next for leader skills uh, not like status effects are that apparent in the game. Thanks for answering the question. Nestle quick in a bucket. Uh, and by demi god leads, I guess he means you know how we have demi leads, the um, the leaders that don't like give Goku plus three. Like Goku Black and yeah. No, not not exactly. The ones that don't give plus three key. Like I think Golden was Golden Frieza one of the. Like it's been a bit, but <laughs> they were like, I they gave a hundred percent all a hundred percent all stats. But they just didn't give. Yeah, I thought I thought Goku Black did that, not Rose, the regular one. Now I don't remember. I don't remember either. Uh, I don't know. The, the Something. One, the, the dunking one. Yeah, the one who just like drops a sick dunk on your head. Physical. Goku Black. Let's see what the internet has to say to me. You are correct. He was one of those. Haha. So, uh-huh. So do like extreme ones of those where they give like 150. I don't know if they would ever do that. I feel like the plus three key is too vital to a lot of things. Like when that physical Goku Black released and it was a Dokkan was still like a very different game. It wasn't very it wasn't 100 percent clear that plus three key was actually key to solving a lot of the issues with Dokkan teams. Because <laughs> now if you don't have that starting key, it's just bad like no one uses the <clears throat> the super side of the extreme leads where they only give plus one key and some stat bonuses so yeah it really is bad it's not yeah. good i don't think we'll ever see dog leads um and in terms of what is next for leader skills i don't i don't know i don't know if i want more leader skills it's really weird because i feel like you know as i was mentioning with physical cooler the game is just too uh divided I don't really like the concept of leader skills anyway. At least, like, I shouldn't have friend leaders. Yeah, maybe get rid of the friend leaders, which would be nice. Just one leader skill. If they're going to make the big, powerful leader skill, just make it one leader skill, and then we're done. And then the the buddy should just kind of, I guess, kind of like the world tournament, but good. <laughs> make it simple, because <laughs> the world tournament doesn't take into account your leader skill. But if they just kind of balance the game different, it would probably work out that way. But I don't know. I mean... I'm sure they'll figure out some change about it. Eventually, they're going to have to figure out something with this. <laughs> what are they going to do? Just, just to releasing? salvage it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the worst thing they could do is, like, create some kind of... Uh, create, like, 5,000 leaders that all, like, do... Like, our leaders are very specific things. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, if you were ever in the Boo Saga, then congratulations, you get plus three key and, like, 150% to everything. Uh, I think it would be pretty bad <laughs> if they started doing that. 
Because then you're going to start having like 27 different leads for t- <laughs> when you can only run like three teams because the only time people are going to get. You guys, yeah, you're going to start getting leads that are so specific. It's like uh, any character with messy hair gets <laughs> 170%. Any character with well brushed hair gets nothing. Any character who ever declared the fight will end in five minutes and it lasted longer than five minutes, <laughs> they'll get a ca- they'll get like some kind of category or something. Like that'd be insane. Just don't do that. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't do that. Just I'm, I'm, <laughs> figure out something. I'm sure they'll figure out something. <laughs> like they got time, hopefully. Uh, and final questions. Hey, podcast, how's it going? Going to skip straight to the questions. Question one, do you think Xenoverse units besides physical Xeno Trunks will Dokkan? I need that physical Mira to Dokkan heroes because of that Link set. Two, what is your favorite DB, DBZ, DBS, or DBGT theme song? Uh, three, do you still play Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links? And four, what do you think Bandai is going to keep a trend of making a new villain god lead movie villains? If so, does that mean Super Android 13 would be next, followed by Bojack? I believe it was also this guy who sent the email before Super 17 was announced, so he didn't know. Uh, and he doesn't have a name, so I'm going to call him Blue Man. Thank you, Blue Man. Uh, I mean, in terms of the Xenoverse units, they have to at some point, right? <laughs> well, they're going to run out of ideas eventually. Like, right? There's nothing you can do yeah. about it. I mean, the silly... What, the. It has to at some point. I mean, at some point, every single unit in the game has to just Dokkan awaken. The silly thing would be like waiting, like I don't know, four years, and then just deciding six years in we should Dokkan these guys. But that I don't even know if that would surprise me. I feel like that when they run out of shit to do, they're like, oh fuck, and they just like flick through their notepad of ancient units, and they're like, this one. Finally, the AGL Awaken, Super Saiyan, <laughs> the AGL Super Saiyan Goku is gonna get a Dokkan Awakening. <laughs> <laughs> Six years in, this game's gonna go crazy. <laughs> it's gonna go so hard. It's gonna go so hard. Uh, yeah, ven- eventually, some point, it'd be silly if they didn't do it soon enough, though. Like it's weird that only physical Zeno Chunks <laughs> has a Dokkan. It is a little weird, isn't it? It is really it's a little odd. Strange. Um, so, uh, question two. What is your favorite DB, DBZ, DBS, or DBGT theme song? Does... Uh, hmm. This is this one's a little bit tough. Uh, obviously, it's uh, uh, Welcome to the Grand Tour from Dragon Ball GT. <laughs> the greatest rap song ever made about an anime. Uh, I really like the new one that just came out. A limit, limit I don't know survive. if it's good as Headshala, that's like the classic, but the new one slams. Yeah, it's pretty good. A limit Survivor, I think it is. Uh, don't watch DBS, but I do at least listen to the theme songs when it comes out, because I like hearing me some music. I think the one I like the most is like from original Dragon Ball. Like, either the fantasies, the ending theme with Bulma, or that original version of the Dragon Ball theme song that was made a long time ago. <laughs> the one that was, like, from oh. the, the... Are you the, talking about uh, gotta find those Dragon, Dragon Balls? balls. Yeah. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> find them all. I take it back. Balls. That's the best one. <laughs> <laughs> gotta find take your wish come true. Find them Dragon Balls. <laughs> and it's literally just, like, over and over again. Yeah, it's like, Dragon Balls. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Find them Dragon Ball. So dun, dun, dun. You, we as a nation of people used to be very good. <laughs> and it was in the, <laughs> in the brief time of the 80s where people in the 80s looked at anime and said, well, Samurai Pizza Cats worked. Can we just make that? And can, can we just Samurai Pizza? Can we 80s? Can we Transformers up this anime <laughs> and give it a theme song? And they were right. The, they They could. So yeah, that one's mine. That one's re- that one good. That one slams, as the kids say. <laughs> that one rocks. Uh, <laughs> do you still also play? Yeah. Uh, now that you say rock? Of course, we have to point out uh, rock the dragon. Oh yeah, that dragon is rocking. The <laughs> worst <laughs> song of all time. <laughs> Whatever. Dragon balls. 
and it's the old... just like weird guitar and screaming most of the time, but not like not like scream music screaming, but like yeah. Dragon Ball powering up screaming. And the, and the animation quality is vastly different because sometimes they would use clips from the anime and sometimes they would use it from the much cleaner looking at um, anime movies. So you'd have Roshi yeah, yeah, like, it's, it's like, it's like, sometimes it would be the anime and then sometimes it'd be like the Tree of Might, I think, is all over that opening. Yeah. The the Earth's mightiest. So you have like fucking uh, Roshi and 720, 720p, 60 frames per second doing sick flips and shit. And then you'd cut to original Dragon Ball Dragon Ball Z footage of Nappa of destroying the plane and it looks like 480p. <laughs> like fuzzy. It goes from like the boss battles of the movie to like Nappa blowing up a tank. Yeah. I hate the media. <laughs> All the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I have a very soft place for Rock the Dragon. <laughs> I think it's pretty rocking. <laughs> uh, man. Oh, we could just sit here and talk about uh, Dragon Ball theme songs all day. We should do a video where it's just us listening to the theme songs and going like... Listening the to various Dragon Ball themes? Yeah, just absolutely destroy our YouTube ch- the, the the Reddit YouTube channel with so many ads. <laughs> We're bad that going to come for us as quickly as possible. <laughs> just talk about them rank them and stuff like that we'll figure out something um next what do we still play Yu-Gi-Oh! duel links uh for me the answer is no i think you still play it zed but i think it's what year is this <laughs> 2017 zed april yes i i do still play you get to links the this year, year. <laughs> the year is april 1st 2017 <laughs> <laughs> Uh yes, you do still play Duel Links. <laughs> I do, I do. Uh, you know what? I really the, the problem I have with Duel Links is it's just taking a little bit too. It's too slow to release the stuff, and I kind of like Yu Gi Oh when you just have like a bunch of options. I really need a Yu Gi Oh game that releases like ten thousand cards, and then when it takes like three months to update, it's okay because I'm still like I've only used like a hundred and twenty seven of the cards. <laughs> <laughs> so there's still more cards for me to play with and stuff like that that's kind of what i want um and maybe eventually duel links, yeah. will, duel links will maybe eventually reach that point i'm sure they won't ever release another Yu Gi Oh game that maybe surpasses duel links anytime that that's like way better than duel links in every way yeah, yeah i can't imagine that because how imagine trying to play on a mobile device it's a regular Yu Gi Oh. It take forever. <laughs> it take forever. Phones can't even handle that much play of Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, that's that's too much Yu-Gi-Oh play. It is. It's too much. Everyone um, would just play Blue Eyes White Dragon and lose really quickly. <laughs> Absolutely. Are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, playing Blue Eyes and Breaking. That's all that they would do in the year 2017 <laughs> and no other year. <laughs> uh, next, do we think? Bandai is going to keep a trend of making new villain god leads movie villains. Uh, I mean, eventually they'll make more movie villains, right? They're not going to have a choice at some point. They're... Dragon but... Ball is a finite well of characters, right? Like, you can't yeah. You can't yeah. just go forever. So anytime someone's like, hey, do you think they'll use this character? The answer is inevitably at some point, yes. Yeah, at some point they're going to have to bring out the trucker hat and be like, he's Dokkan Fest, <laughs> boom. They're going to do the same for Bojack, boom, Dokkan Fest, everyone's Dokkan Fest, Dr. Wheelow, boom, Dokkan Fest, absolutely anyone you can think of, <laughs> Garley Jr., boom, Dokkan Fest, anything, absolutely anything. Huh. And that, I think it's done with the questions. We are done with the modcast, Zen. Man, what a... What a crazy! For only two of us, we were able to talk a decent amount. Yeah, I feel like I feel like if there were four of us, we would maybe talk for thirteen minutes less. Maybe at the forty-minute mark <laughs> is where the episode would end. <laughs> would have ended. Yeah, if I if I were to take a weird guess and say if you know uh, uh, if uh, JX and Toast were with us, I think the episode would have been much shorter for some for some reason. <laughs> We would old... try to be more concise because it wouldn't just be us gabbing, you know. Yeah, in a weird. Old that's your theory. I yeah, I agree with your theory. I'm gonna create a series called Game Theory because that's my game theory about what's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, 
yeah, speaking of crazy 2017 things, then, you know how Breath of the Wild just came out and uh, Horizon Zero Dawn has been completely overshadowed by Breath of the Wild? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure the Horizon devs have learned their lesson and will never do anything like that ever again. Yeah, imagine if they were to release a second game <laughs> <laughs> during another <laughs> equally as hyped open world game. And it completely got overshadowed again. <laughs> Man, that'd be sad. Another gaming news. I think in about three months, Orc Collection is going to release. I can't wait to try that out. <laughs> See yeah, that looks out. really great. I'm sure nothing bad will happen. No, I'm sure. We're all waiting for the Dokkan Killer, and we think having every single property from Orc Coll- from Shonen Jump would easily kill off uh, Dokkan, and we can maybe start a brand new podcast filled with uh, other shonen properties. A real smorgasbord, so to say, if we could go further. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Good times, everyone. This is the end of the modcast. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, have a happy uh, April 1st, 2017, and we'll mm-hmm. see you guys. Enjoy 2017, anybody. I really hope there's no horrible illness that shuts the country down in four years. Yeah, and I really hope that whoever is our cur- our next president doesn't completely fuck us. <laughs> so, <laughs> I will see you guys in the next years from the same house I'm going to have for the next <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye everyone from 2017. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>